right, we are right at the start time of 2 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, so we will now begin. Uh, first off, good afternoon. I am Jason Thomas, Project Engineer here at America Makes and your host for today's America Makes TRX webinar series. A little background on the TRX webinar series before I introduce our speaker. As America Makes continues this mission to expand and accelerate the footprint of additive manufacturing and 3D printing, this medium called the America Makes Technical Review and Exchange Webinar Series was created. By creating this platform, it allows the additive manufacturing and 3D printing community to come together and share knowledge and experience with the broader community. If you or your team are interested in presenting during the TRX webinar series, there will be a link to complete the request form at the end of our series today, or you can contact the, contact the America Makes TRX webinar series administrator, Jason Thomas, directly. A few important notes before we kick off the series. At the end of the presentation, there will be an opportunity for a brief question and answer or Q&A session. If during the presentation you have a question, please submit it in the Q&A space on your WebEx screen and we will ask it during the Q&A session. We will do our best to get to all the questions. Today's webinar is on Directed Energy Deposition, DED, the triathlete. Without further ado, it is my pleasure to introduce our speakers for today, Melanie Lang and Kevin Luo from Form Alloy. Melanie, who is the co-founder and CEO of Form Alloy, is motivated by developing a disruptive technology that delivers the future we could have previously only imagined. Geomet geometrically complex components made from exotic materials. Her passion has manifested into making wavelengths in metal additive manufacturing since co-founding Form Alloy in 2016. Prior to Form Alloy, Melanie had over 15 years of experience as an engineer and program manager with Lockheed Martin and Boeing. She holds a bachelor's in aerospace engineering from the University of Illinois and a master's in systems architecture and engineering from the University of Southern California. In addition to her role at Form Alloy, Melanie currently serves as the vice president of legislative affairs for Navy League San Diego and is a woman in 3D printing ambassador. Kevin Luo is the business development manager and is focused on growing the rapidly emerging market of metal additive manufacturing or 3D printing through advancing the technology and optimizing existing and new materials. His position at Metal AM OEM Formaloy allows him to deliver equipment and solutions for a variety of applications. Prior to Formaloy, Kevin held roles as a product manager at Praxair Surface Technologies and an engineer at GE Power. He holds a master's and bachelor's in mechanical engineering from West Virginia University. Okay, Melanie, Kevin, I'll now turn it over to you and your team. Hey, Kevin, I think you guys might have it muted. Can you hear us now, Jason? Sure can. Okay, great. Well, before we get started, I want to thank America Makes for hosting these TRX sessions. And Jason, thanks so much for coordinating all this. We are a proud member of America Makes. And so we appreciate this opportunity to share more about what we're doing and help advance America Makes vision to accelerate adoption of additive manufacturing. My name is Melanie Lang. Like Jason said, I'm the co-founder and CEO of Form Alloy. I also want to thank all of our participants today for learning more about what we do. I want to get started at a higher level talking a little bit about Metal AM and what it is and what it means and show, first of all, the ecosystem of Metal AM processes. Now, this was pulled a, a few months ago, and it's uh, probably already outdated because there's always new technologies and companies joining this ecosystem. But the takeaway really is, you know, similar to traditional manufacturing methods, there's a wide range of processes. And it's really important for the end users to look at their particular application and research these various processes to figure out which is best suited for their application. 
I feel very comfortable in saying that there's not one of these technologies that is superior across the board. Uh, it's really about your particular application and which technology fits best for that application. Now, some of the considerations to make when you're looking at these different technologies is your ultimate end result. What are your requirements in terms of sur surface finish, material properties? How detailed is your part? What is your desired uh, economics in terms of build speed, uh, material cost, and your uh, ability to do a, a finishing type process on that? And there's other considerations as well, but those are some of the high level considerations. And so, you know, again, um, you know, we're, we're absolutely thrilled and I'm, I'm very excited about the DED technology and what it can do. But for people new to AM, there are many technologies and it's important to research across the spectrum in Metal AM and, and find out what will work best for your particular application. So now we've talked about the overall ecosystem. I want to talk a little bit more about where we fit at, at Form Alloy. And that is in the powder uh, feedstock, and we use laser as our energy source. And so uh, within that ecosystem, this is kind of broken down a little bit further. Uh, and so this is specifically what we do. Now, a little later on in this presentation, uh, Kevin will deep dive into one of our closest uh, type of technologies that we see a lot in Metal AM, which is powder bed fusion. So he'll talk a little bit more about the differences of DED and powder bed fusion. Um, but again, just wanted to make everyone aware, you know, at a high level, what, what DED is and, and what it means. So before we dive into the technology further, a little bit more about Form Alloy. Uh, we are a designer and producer of directed energy deposition systems and solutions. And our focus is to enable customers to utilize metal AM processes to form parts or create new parts, to enhance parts either by adding features or by adding a different material to improve the properties, and also to repair metallic parts uh, with this technology. And, and these are you know, three different applications that, that are all suitable for a single system. Now, one of our goals with creating Form Alloy was really to enable uh, customers to not only do those, those three things, but to do so cost effectively in terms of powder efficiency and build speed. And we'll talk a little bit more about that uh, through this presentation. Uh, we are in our fourth year of operation right now. Uh, we have roots in the aerospace and heavy industries, and our mission is really to enable our customers to not only utilize additive manufacturing in an R&D center and for research, but to enable the transition to a uh, full production system. A little bit more about directed energy deposition and what it is, it's an AM process that uses a thermal energy to fuse materials. Now you might have heard this called laser metal deposition, LMD, direct metal deposition, DMD, and I've had uh, some uh, journalists ask me to go through each of these you know, three technologies and explain what they are and uh, they're, they're the same. It's just a you know, different way to, uh, to call it. Um, uh, we call it direct energy deposition. Uh, and again, from the ecosystem chart, uh, you probably noted that there are different types of thermal energy sources that can be considered uh, for the DED process. Uh, there's laser, electron beam, uh, plasma, and there's also a choice of material feedstock, uh, powder or wire. So at Form Alloy, we use a laser as our thermal energy source, and we use metal powder as the material. Now, I wanna talk a little bit about the diagram on the bottom, which shows in more detail what is happening in the process. You'll see there's a coaxial nozzle. Out of the outer nozzle is where the powder comes, uh, and that forms a powder cone. In the center of that coaxial nozzle is the laser beam. That creates a melt pool, and the powder cone is formed into that melt pool, and then parts are built up layer by layer. You can see on the video that's happening on the right, that's an in-process part being built, uh, and you can see uh, there's a melt pool that's the brightest part, and you can slightly see the powder cone above that that's being fused into that melt pool as it's filled. Now with directed energy deposition, 
you're getting a full metallurgical bond upon deposition. A little bit more about how it works. Uh, again, I talked about some of this on the prior slide, but you need a, a heat source, which we use a laser for, uh, and then you also need the material feedstock with delivery, and then a deposition head. Uh, these key components are added to a, a motion system and a controller, uh, and that's integrated with a laser and powder feeders in order to deposit material and move the, uh, the head and the part where you need it to be in order to achieve your desired end geometry. Uh, you also need a CAD or slicing software, a CAD CAM slicing software package, which will take your 3D model, slice it, and our controller runs on G-code, and that tells the machine where to be and when, and how fast the powder should be coming out, and the uh, power level for the laser. And then uh, powder is pulled from the powder feeder, uh, goes into the deposition head, and uh, is controlled you know, from that controller through the motion system to build up the part layer by layer. All right, and this is uh, Kevin Liu. I'll take over from here for a few slides. Uh, to continue with the webinar, I would like to present an overview of the DED technology compared to another common metal AM technology, uh, laser powder bed fusion. You may also re hear it referred to as SLM or DMLS, uh, similar to DED, several names, same process. Uh, the laser powder bed fusion process is, a, is an AM technology that uses a laser to join powder in a powder bed. Makes sense. Once a layer is complete, the bed is indexed down and a new layer of powder is spread over the build area before the next, next layer is printed. Um, both laser powder bed fusion and directed energy deposition has their advantages and disadvantages, and each are better suited for certain geometries and materials. In fact, the processes may complement each other and even subtractive manufacturing methods down the road. Uh, both, uh, I've created a table comparing the two processes in terms of feature resolution slash part complexity, build rate, build volume, number of parts per build, laser power, materials available, amount of material used during the process, um, is, the, is the process able to produce multi-material parts, and can you add features and material onto existing parts? Starting with the feature resolution and part complexity, laser powder bed certainly has its advantage in terms of wall thicknesses, surface roughness, and resolution. Uh, the laser beam spot size is typically in the 20 to 100 micron range, uh, the slight trade-off with that technology is um, support structures are needed for overhang angles, usually less than 45 degrees as a standard rule of thumb. Um, DED is a near net shape that will not achieve the same level of resolution compared to laser powder bed. With, uh, the beam size and uh, beam spot size in DED is typically 500 to 600 micron in diameter at the minimum, but usually hovers around one millimeter. It can, however, utilize five or six axis motion to produce parts without the need for support structures. Uh, build rate, uh, DED excels compared to laser powder bed fusion. A typical laser powder bed process would build at roughly, you know, 0.15 kilograms per hour with variations depending on materials and the system. Um, DED can hit high build rates um, with additive builds typically between one to, one to two kilograms per hour. Uh, if your laser beam spot size is around two to five uh, millimeters. Uh, the build volume of DED also has an advantage over the laser powder bed fusion counterpart. Um, it is typically only limited by the capabilities of the motion system. Um, the number of parts produced should be reviewed before choosing which technology you should go forward with to produce parts. Um, laser bed, uh, so LPBF certainly has an advantage when it comes to producing multiple small parts and a single build volume. Uh, but if you're looking for large single parts, DED usually gets the nod. Um, the num um, to, to be able to hit a number of the process parameters, you also have to take a, take a look at the maximum laser power within the system. Uh, the laser powder bed fusion processes are typically maxing out around one kilowatt right now for our lasers, but they can incorporate multiple lasers, such as a four by 500 watt laser configuration. Uh, DED can certainly go at a larger range, so it's not kind of sucked back by the constraint. Um, so you're typically, for additive builds, seeing between 500 to three kilowatt lasers, or 500 watts to three kilowatt lasers. Um, the 
types of materials between the technologies are kind of a push since the powder manufacturers can size the different particle size distributions out of a single heat or a single lot uh, to meet the demand for the various technologies. Uh, however, the advantage for DED is certainly that it uses a significant uh, amount of material less than laser powder, powder bed fusion. Uh, the powder bed process requires a quantity to fill the XY surface, uh, surface of the build area, whereas DED is depositing material directly on top of the previous layer. So you could potentially use 90% less powder in a DED process versus a powder bed process. Um, lastly, DED is unique in its ability to add material onto existing parts, and we'll cover the enhanced features and the repair applications in the upcoming slides. But yes, you can certainly create parts with multiple materials in a single step. Uh, to summarize, consider the different processes available to make a prototype part or move towards serial, serial production. Uh, so we're going to get into why we call DED a triacid. Um, it, is, it is definitely a versatile technology that not many AM technologies can say they do. Um, we like to say that the DED technology can form enhance and repair metallic components. Uh, DED can form parts in an additive manner to produce complex structures. It can enhance parts to uh, en enhance parts with geometric addition for structural improvements or differing materials for improved properties. And it can repair existing parts or return parts to surface. Focusing on form first, uh, with DED, you can certainly create complex uh, geometries and intricate design features with wall thicknesses regularly around one to three millimeters. The, the larger your spot size and layer thicknesses, the faster your part can be made. And with the size of the part only limited by the motion system, the technology is highly scalable. The technology can be integrated onto existing motion, uh, motion system assemblies. So you could yourself integrate our, the technology used in DED into a motion system that you currently have in house and have yourself a directed energy deposition system. Uh, the images show that you can, how you can design for additive, achieve a part such as a rocket nozzle, and eventually scale up. Um, to the right is a large pro uh, DED. Uh, I believe it's a wire arc process, um, and NASA usually incorporates it for a lot of combustion liners and the rocket nozzle downstream. Getting into the variables, there are a number of variables that play a key part when it comes to building a component uh, via the DED. The laser as a heat source can come in a variety of ranges when it comes to laser power. Uh, they can have different energy profiles such as Gaussian or top hat, so you get your energy distribution slightly different between the two different profiles. And you can incorporate a variety of beam spot sizes based on the optics or in the fiber configuration within the laser assembly. The scan and slice strategies can determine how accurate the features come out, uh, the porosity within the final part, and the residual stresses within the part. And of course, the powder, when it comes to composition and powder flow, could certainly play a major part when it comes to the printability of the part. To accelerate the development process, there is a suite of in-process monitoring and closed-loop control features that can ensure high-quality parts. The DED process can incorporate coaxial or off-axis measurement devices to monitor the, monitor the device uh, process and potentially feed the signal back to the controller and adjust the parameters during the build. Variables to monitor are, uh, examples of variables that can be monitored are the melt pool size and melt pool, size temp or melt pool temperature, the layer thicknesses, uh, the powder flow, and others. Um, to the left, you'll see an off-axis camera monitoring uh, and it features a real-time view of the deposition process and the powder coat. One of the, one of the unique uh, abilities of DED is its ability to enhance uh, existing parts. Um, it is unique in the fact that it doesn't require a flat surface to be a starting point. Existing parts can be brought into the system and have materials added to it by the DED process. Geometric features such as ribs and collars can improve mechanical properties. And new materials can be added to create functional, functionally graded material or FGM systems to improve the properties of the, uh, compared to the base material. On the fly, powder blending or unique powder feeding systems can create gradient transitions to reduce residual stresses between layers of differing materials during the process. 
The images below show an Inconel 625 clad, clad on top of a copper base liner uh, on the left image. Uh, the image on the right is an example that we produce at Formoy a functionally graded material system. Uh, one has the closest, uh, the, the image or the part in front ha is an Inconel 625 and transitions into a copper, top, uh, copper piece on top. Whereas the piece in the, in the back of the image has, is a transition from an Inconel 718 into an Inconel 625. And finally, a cobalt-based alloy called Stellite 6, which is, an al which is a common, commonly used alloy in laser cladding for uh, corrosion resistance. Sorry, heavy thumb there. The technology has been used to enhance parts for decades in a laser cladding functionality. Laser cladding is a build-up process that allows the same material or alternative materials to build up and overlay onto existing surfaces. The layers are metallurgically bonded and have a minimal, minimal heat affected zone, or HAZ, so post-heat treatment is often not necessary. The result? greatly extended life and superior properties for cladded components. NASA takes the AM technology one step further by combining the two AM technologies described earlier. The laser powder bed uh, fusion copper liners exhibit intricate, intricate cooling beams to allow for higher firing temperatures. Um, the parts are then cladded in an inconel structural jacket to increase the mechanical strength of the final component. It's truly an, it is truly an application where the advantages of both technologies are used to make parts that were previously impossible or would have incredibly long lead times. DED has been around to repair damaged and worn areas of components for decades also. This can be crucial to returning a system to operation if a damaged part has a high cost for a replacement or long lead times associated with it. By cutting down the lead times to potentially days and returning an or, or extending the life of the components, the capabilities capabilities of DED repair can be invaluable for those uh, in both additive or subtractive components. Uh, below is an example of a locomotive shaft repair that we did. Uh, by reapplying material back onto the shaft, we were able to return it to service within the week. Um, other common repairs would be, uh, examples would be like a TIE 6 blade tip repair. Over time, the blade tips would wear out uh, due to rubbing along the engine casing. With a few millimeters of material deposited by DED and some surface finish, uh, the blade can quickly be returned to the engine and cut down on costs associated with lost time. Uh, there are a number of variables. Uh, sorry. Uh, here, we wanted to take a look at uh, applications of case studies. Um, we wanted to highlight some of the applications we worked on at Form Alloy for our customers and, custom and partners. Uh, we've worked on parameter development of next generation alloys to validate that the material composition is suited for DAM technologies. Uh, the first image shows a racetrack development that we worked with NASA on, uh, and it's their HR1 material. Uh, this is their latest generation of high strength iron nickel super alloy from the A286 and JBK75 family. The alloy is designed to resist high pressure, hydrogen environment embrittlement, oxidation, and corrosion. Um, Something unique that we've done uh, is significant work when it comes to pure copper and copper alloy deposition. Uh, the top middle image contains pure copper cubes produced by our IR laser deposition process. Uh, this may not sound significant as copper is a common material used in a variety of parts, but due to the reflectivity of the material, it typically absorbs less than 10% of the IR laser's energy. However, the cubes that we produced here at Form Alloy had 99% density and had electric, electrical conductivity and tensile properties within 3% of the typical oxygen-free property. Uh, the bottom middle image shows a, a proof of concept of a rocket nozzle with GRCOP42. Uh, this is a copper chrome niobium alloy used for rocket propulsion components. Um, it has the, all the advantages of copper when it comes to thermal conductivity uh, for intricate cooling schemes. Uh, but with added strength at ele elevated temperatures and is overall easier to print in additive manufacturing. Lastly, to promote alloy development and functionally graded material systems, uh, Form Alloy designed and made the Alloy Development Feeder, um, or ADF as we like to call it. It does feature many hoppers and a revolver style indexer to deliver up to 16 different powder combinations into differing melt pools. 
Um, each of the deposited samples on the top right has a slight variation within its chemistry. Um, let's, let's go into materials and metal powder. But the metal powder is the feedstock for our DED systems here at Form Alloy, and the supply chain is as large as it's ever been. Each year, more materials are researched and parameters are developed, and with the advancements from us, the end users, the powder suppliers are able to make more materials commercially available. With a variety of powder production techniques and suppliers, uh, now is a great time to work with powder-based AM technologies. Um, what I've included here is a list of commonly used materials in DED, both on the AM side and for the laser cleaning process. Um, and with that, I'll turn it over to Melanie again to summarize. All right. Thank you, Kevin. So I just want to close a little bit and summarize what we've heard about DED today. And that is that it can be used for several different applications. And that's, that's exactly why we call it the triathlete, like Kevin said. It has the ability to form parts, creating complex geometries with high value materials very efficiently and quickly. It allows customers to enhance existing parts or designs either by using multiple materials to enhance the properties or by adding enhanced features to existing parts. And finally, on the repair side, the ability to quickly add material with a full metallurgical bond and return a high value component back to service without having to go through a remanufacturing or acquisition process uh, is very important. Uh, we work with a wide range of industries and applications. Uh, aerospace and space is uh, probably marks the, the top in terms of our customer set. Uh, energy is another big one, particularly oil and gas. Uh, we also work in the maritime space, uh, automotive industry, and a wide range of consumer products as well. And so, you know, with that, we'd be happy to uh, take your questions. And uh, our email address is listed on uh, the, the first slide. And uh, we'll also have that at the end as well, uh, info at formalloy.com. We'd be happy to talk to you about our technology and even suggest a different technology if your application doesn't appear to be a good fit for direct energy deposition system. Um, but we want to help you get across that finish line and help you transition from R&D and prototyping to full production. So thanks again, and uh, with that, I'll turn it back over to you, Jason, for Q&A. All right, thank you so much, Kevin and Melanie. Uh, we'll now head into that Q&A session. Um, once again, if you do have a question for the presenter and you haven't done so already, please type it into the chat box. Um, I do have a question to start with here. So um, on slide 11, you mentioned about closed loop controls. Were you able to have variable powder flow rate too? Yeah, variable powder flow rate is certainly achievable with this process. Uh, it's a, uh, a very simple uh, button or lever to change in our process that's done through the G-code. Um, so that's certainly a parameter that is uh, very simple to change with our process. Okay, thank you. Um, another question here. What materials are most commonly used? We work with a very wide range of materials. Um, nickel and iron-based materials are fairly common. Uh, we do a lot right now with copper uh, and copper alloys. It's kind of a growing area of interest uh, due to its uh, thermal properties. And especially now that we can do, uh, you know, gradient and bimetallic work, um, you know, it, it benefits copper even more because you can add materials to copper to make it stronger, such as copper and inconel combinations. Um, and then we work with a lot of uh, custom materials, uh, custom materials that customers are developing on their own for custom applications, uh, and some very unique materials. So we're certainly not limited to the list that uh, is even shown today in our presentation. Um, we're happy to work with a very wide range of materials, and it's, it's one of the best processes in terms of uh, the ability to work with that wide range of materials. Yeah, we, we typically like to say, if you can get a powder that flows, give us a shot, because we can certainly uh, do some parameter development and give you 
feasibility on whether or not that composition or that type of powder will be able to be used in DEV going forward. I guess the other thing that I'll add to that is uh, with the addition of the alloy development feeder that we released last year, customers are able to create their own custom alloys very quickly and the development cycle for that is reduced from months to years uh, that can be measured now in days or weeks uh, with that with that specialty feeder. So, um, you know, custom alloys are certain, certainly an area that we see growth in as well. All right, so um, another question here. What kind of toolpath generation software is required and do you provide a post-processor to generate the G-code? Yes, yeah, so we work with uh, different softwares depending on the application. Uh, we work with very simple slicing programs. If you're only doing something in three axis, that's more uh, research based. Uh, for five axis, uh, we work with a different set of software. And, uh, and then we do a, a, a post process to that to generate a G code that runs on our system. Uh, so we don't develop that, that software in house. Uh, we work with uh, third party developers and software companies that are that are well known and and people are fairly familiar with uh, that do that work for us so we don't you're not locked into our uh, custom CAD CAM software um, I'll also add to that we have some customers that use something in-house already and as long as the the software that the customer is using can generate a G code it can run on our machine so you're not locked into one particular CAD CAM solution uh, to develop that G-code. Great. So um, what are the advantages of DED versus other AM technologies? Yeah, I think some of that we, we covered with, with Kevin's discussion on the uh, DED versus uh, powder bed type technologies. In general, with DED, you will get significantly faster build times, you know, orders of magnitude faster, up to 15 pounds per hour deposition rates, uh, and it's scalable, so you can do uh, small parts as well as very large parts, uh, and also high throughput um, because of the, the high deposition speed. Uh, we can work with high power lasers, which enable uh, that those faster deposition rates, and also enable the the ability to work with some of those more challenging materials, um, and then uh, lower material costs. So uh, there's you know very high powder efficiency with DED, uh, where there's very little material waste. Um, and then I would say on the multi-material side, you know you can integrate multi-material parts, you know, into your process. You don't have to think about uh, each material having to be its own component and figuring out a way how to, um, you know, fixture those components together. Now you can build a single component out of multiple materials, not only from a, a new part production standpoint, but also from a repair standpoint. So if you have an area that is being worn or corroded, you can repair it with a superior material to be corrosion or wear resistant, you know, for example. So those are some of the things that are unique to DED that can't be done with other AM technologies. Um, you know, one of the, the trade-offs with DED, with all the good, uh, comes the, uh, uh, the slight reduction in surface finish from like a powder bed type technology. From our perspective, if there's a finishing process that's required, uh, it makes sense to us for many applications to get the faster build speeds and the higher powder efficiency and the ability to work with the multi-materials if you're going to do a subtractive or finishing process anyways, uh, it makes sense typically to get those economic benefits of the DED process. Okay, great. Uh, that will wrap up today's TRX webinar series. I would like to thank Melanie and Kevin. If you have any further questions for the presenter, please reach out to them directory, directly. And uh, Melanie, you wanna go to that last slide so they can get your contact yes. information? Sure, yeah, and our, our website is www.formalloy.com, and you can send us an email at the info at formalloy.com, and that'll go both to Kevin and myself. All right, great. 
also there will be a post webinar survey going out to all of those who participated we really do appreciate the time you take to provide america makes feedback so we may continue to improve and strengthen the additive community and a reminder that if you think if you or your organization will be interested in sharing on the trx webinar series please fill, for out, fill out the form that follows the presentation or you, re, you can reach out to me jason thomas directly thank you very much have a great day